Hello and welcome to my one by one pocket size mini folding wireless Bluetooth keyboard review. That was a lot to say. This keyboard at the moment is going for $34.99 with free shipping on Amazon. That means you've got to get one more penny to get the free shipping. As you can see, there's a huge difference. This keyboard looks really tiny. But actually, if you move the keyboard and line up the keys, it's actually not as small as you think. So I'll go ahead and open up the keyboard and the first thing you'll notice is the green light turns on as long as you have a charge anyway that's just showing that the power is on and if you press the FN key and the C key at the same time that turns on the Bluetooth scanning thing the pairing thing so all you do is go into your phone's Bluetooth settings and then pair it up with the one by one keyboard you'll see it listed as one by one keyboard there is no pairing number, so it just pairs automatically, or at least it did for me. This keyboard has a pretty standard layout. I know a lot of keyboards I've looked at, the ones that come with the case and you put your tablet or phone in the case, a lot of them don't have a standard layout. They have the question mark next to the space bar instead of next to the shift key and stuff like that. I can't stand that. This keyboard pretty much has a standard layout other than the number keys are altered to the right one whole row, column. So now I'll demonstrate closing the keyboard which shuts off the keyboard and then opening it back up which will power the keyboard back on. And then we'll see how long it takes before you can start typing again. So there is no typing lag, meaning no delay when you press the key and it shows up. The only delay is if your phone or if the program is running too slow in order to keep up, especially if you're a quick typer like I am. One thing I did notice is if you press a couple keys on the same side of the keyboard, like say, say you want to press Control A to select all or Control C, mainly Control A is what I had it happen. Well, what happens is it lifts the whole left side of the keyboard up because I guess you're putting so much pressure on one side. The build quality seems pretty well made. It feels nice and, I don't know, materials very well. Metal, aluminum, something like that. It doesn't feel like cheap plastic at all. When you close it, it magnetizes to itself. It has a nice click. And it doesn't feel like it's going to break when you open it or close it even multiple times. It, do, it doesn't feel like it's going to wear out. It really feels well made. And it fits your hand. You can actually hold it in your hand because it's so small once you close it. It's so cool. So what I really like about this keyboard is the style of keys it has. They're very thin. They're very, they don't travel very far before they click at the bottom. And if you enjoy like how a laptop feels, the keys on the laptop, then you'll love this because it's just like that pretty much. Okay, so now I'll demonstrate some of the shortcuts like Control A, Control C, and shortcuts like this are for copy and paste, select all, stuff like that. Control A, Control C, Control V. And other shortcuts that I'm used to on Windows, like shift and arrow keys to select your words, or shift control arrow keys and stuff like that, they, they work as well. Although shift control arrow keys don't always work. I think it depends on the program. And you can see sometimes the whole keyboard is lifting up. It's not that big of a deal. It, it feels solid and like the whole keyboard is flipping up, not like just flexing and breaking and so even though the whole keyboard might lift up it it feels like a sturdy lift up does that make any sense okay now at the top of the keyboard you have some shortcuts you have the home button search copy cut paste next volume whatever and how you use them well if you notice on the keys there's blue writing on the keys so what what it is is if you hold FN that activates those blue writing keys. The search button is good for like, say you open up something like Google Play Store and you just want to search for something without type tapping it on your screen. You just hit FN1, it pops up the search box and then you just type your thing, press enter, and there you go. And you can navigate a lot of the things by keyboard. 
So you're not having to switch between typing on the keyboard and tapping on the screen, then back to the keyboard. You can actually navigate with the keyboard a lot of the time. Certain games like Crossy Road do work with the keyboard. And you can see my Crossy Road skills. I am a little bit addicted to this game, but... And then some games like Triple Jump, they just don't respond at all to the keyboard. So not all games work with the keyboard. And here's the game I used to play on the PC a lot, Grail Online. For those who are used to the PC version, this is awesome to have a keyboard. And it also works in applications like Calculator. You can just type the numbers in, or you can actually navigate, navigate the buttons around with the arrow keys and hit Enter to select. I think I prefer to press the numbers myself, but it's up to you. Now I'll show you my actual typing on the keyboard if you haven't seen it in the video already. I have a little timer on my iPod on the right hand side and I'm just going to start typing. And I type about 100 words per minute at my slowest and 125 words per minute at my fastest. So somewhere in between there is my average when I'm, once I'm used to the keyboard anyway. And the point of the iPod is just, sing <laughs> you know, some people are like, oh, it's fake, blah, 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 blah. Because some people are just like that, and I just got to satisfy those people. Now, the biggest problem I'm having getting used to this keyboard is the right shift key. I'm expecting it to be twice as long as what it is. What happens is I keep hitting where the up arrow is instead of where the shift key is. It actually is a bit of a stretch for your pinky to get to the right shift, so I think I'm going to have to readjust my typing and get used to the left shift because I have a big habit of using the right shift all the time, no matter what. Like, I don't even touch the left shift, and I probably should. And I do have one other thing that I'm having a hard time getting used to. It's the one, the number one key. We'll put it this way. The whole number row is shifted over like... It's shifted to the right one whole space. So I'm finding myself typing the wrong numbers all the time. And when I mean to hit one, I hit the little tilde or the whatever that's called key because that's where the one is on a regular keyboard. So, so I do have to get used to that. Another thing is the question mark key is a little bit bigger than a question mark key on a regular keyboard. I haven't had any troubles hitting the question mark key, but I kind of would have preferred if they shortened that and gave me a bigger shift key. One thing I was worried about in the pictures is the little hinges or whatever that move when you open and close it. I was really worried that my hands were gonna be on those and it'd be really uncomfortable, but actually the position of this keyboard, your hands don't even touch them at all. It says on the product page that it works for up to 14 days in standby mode without charging and 64 hours of continuous use. It does shut itself off after, I think, 15 minutes of not using it. And you can hit a key and it'll turn itself back on. But it does take a few seconds to go through the pairing and the connecting and the Bluetooth and all that. So I really do like the fact that you can just close the keyboard and it shuts it off. Like, you don't have to flip a switch first and then close the keyboard. That is a very good design. Okay, so it says it gets a signal distance up to 33 feet, but I seem to lose the connection or it seemed to get a little crazy around 10 feet, I'm guessing, like pretty much across the living room. Say about 10, 12 feet, it started getting a little laggy and then one time it actually held the button when I only tapped the button, so the connection started getting a little eh. Since I'm using mine with a, f a little phone, I'm not really planning on using mine at a big distance because I won't be able to see what I'm doing from a distance. 10 feet is plenty enough for me. Although I have to wonder if you used it with a laptop, would you get better distance because maybe the laptop has better Bluetooth than a phone or see, it might all depend on your devices too. You know, it, it's about as heavy as my phone, my Samsung Galaxy S3 phone. It's about the same weight, so there you go. So I hope you enjoyed my review. I tried to be as thorough as possible, so you are informed of exactly what you're getting. And so would I say this keyboard is worth the money? Yes, I would. Thank you for watching.